Ow, whoa, 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 whoa. It's yellow with moody grey mirrors, darkened alloys, and a carbon fibre textured cloverleaf logo mounted to each front wing. Inside, there are luxurious leather seats and more carbon fibre looking trim on the dashboard, which are clues that this is a sporty Alfa Romeo. Called the Mito Cloverleaf, it is the most powerful version Alfa has made with 167 brake horsepower. It's also the most expensive at almost £18,000. It's fitted with the Fiat Group's new efficient multi-air engine, which electronically regulates the intake of air to give a better flow and improved emissions. And with 184 pound foot of torque, it shifts this Mito to 60 miles an hour in 7.5 seconds, which is a whole four seconds quicker than the 1.4 non-multi-air engine in the range. However, both engines are as economical as each other, doing 47 miles to the gallon on average, which just goes to show how fantastically clever the multi-air technology really is. The power delivery is quite smooth and it's definitely keen and perky, but it lacks the banzai pace that you get from a really hot hatch, but that makes it all very user friendly. And it's fantastic to see the turbo boost gauge go from right to left as your foot goes up and down on the throttle. There is some movement as you change direction and the ride is on the bouncy side, but these seats cushion you well. However, they're a bit too wide to grip me properly. Doing its best to boost the sporty appeal of the Cloverleaf is a new six-speed gearbox, which reacts well to quick shifts and an active suspension that monitors and adjusts the damping to keep body roll under control and to a minimum. You also get Alpha's DNA system, which lets you choose between dynamic, normal or all weather and it determines traction control interference, throttle response and suspension setup. Dynamic is the mode I've been favouring on these country roads and immediately the revs go up, the suspension gets tighter and the steering becomes a lot firmer. The exhaust gets a little bit fruitier as well but for me it's the steering which actually has the biggest improvement because it goes from being pretty awful to all right. The Cloverleaf definitely has a designer feel about it, but when it comes to driving, it's not in the same league of hot hatch royalty as the Renault Sport Clio, which offers more power and a tighter chassis for the same money. But the Mito's unusual looks and green credentials are big plus points. And when you factor in its cheeky character, the Cloverleaf becomes a car you shouldn't overlook.